Hi, I'm Vince Pitstick, and this is MMU Education. If you like this content, please like and subscribe to the channel, and make sure to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time we make a new video drop. Thanks. Can stress slow down your metabolism? We look to answer that in this video with an amazing case study. Most people will remember a time when they were younger and really stressed and they ate less food and they lost a bunch of weight. And it sticks in their mind as an expectation. And we tend to think of stress as something that speeds up the metabolic rate, which helps us lose weight. Most experts or doctors will tell you that there's no such thing as your metabolism slowing down from stress. Or people will say it's all about calories in and calories out. And while that might be true, Stress as we age, particularly to females, can absolutely 100% dramatically slow down your metabolism, if not shut it down altogether. So how do we explain this? Let me show you an amazing case study and break it down so you can see it, because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Let me give you an example, the amazing, wonderful Katrina, okay? Katrina is an Australian client, and she's a hot Pilates instructor. She knows how to eat healthy, uh, she knows how to control her calories. So it kind of throws that out the window because most people, when they start gaining weight, people are going to tell you, well, you're not watching your calories or you're not working out enough. And while for a certain portion of the population that is being researched, that may be true, but there's a significant portion of people that are overstressed and the body's responding in weird metabolic ways that everyone else is telling them isn't real, but absolutely is. So here's a picture of Katarina at 161. Um, now, this is at a point when her calories are probably around 1,200 all the time, right? She's doing probably two classes a day in a hot environment, doing Pilates, doing the workouts with her class instructors, and then still doing cardio or working out outside of that, right? So this breaks down all the barriers that like, oh, you're eating too much or you're sitting on the couch too much. Katarina is anything but that. And in fact, what she started noticing over the last three years is that the more that she actually tried to lose weight, she started gaining more and more. And how could that be possible? How is it true that both calories in, calories out, meaning what that means is that energy balance must be maintained. It's a law of thermodynamics, meaning that the calories that go in, they have to, be, they have to go somewhere and there has to be a net neutral energy balance out, meaning the calories I burn versus the calories I store has to be equal to the calories I took in. That's true. But how fast or slow your metabolic rate is or what it does with those calories is dramatically impacted by your thoughts, your lifestyle, and activity right? All of these things play a part. How functionally balanced your body is will tell you a lot about how the nuclear reactor of your cell, which is the mitochondria, well, how much calories it burns out, which will dramatically affect whether you lose weight or not. Katarina was doing all the things right. And you could see here, she's incredibly swollen, tired, brain fogged, right? Very hard to get up in the morning, right? Was having some digestive issues, right? Um, anxiety, general malaise at times, right? And she just couldn't get the weight off. In fact, she was trapped in a body that she didn't recognize. Well, she finally came into us and we had to tell her you are stress adapted or stress maladapted. So let's talk about that for a minute. What does that mean? So stress, what is it? It's an essential nutrient of change. It is a stimulus. So for example, the stress of gravity on my body stimulates my bones and the osteoclast and osteoblast turn over to make new bone. So without the stress of gravity, you wouldn't reproduce new bone. So it tells your body to stimulates change. Well, think of microdermabrasion in a very similar way. Females can relate to this. If I were to use microdermabrasion on my face, it would bring out new skin and cause, it would induce my cells to produce other skin cells. So it's the nutrient of change. It's the stimulus of change. Hey, have you ever felt like you've been getting limited or bad advice from maybe your OB or endocrinologist or one of your doctors and don't know why you feel bad and are looking for better options, particularly in the world of hormonal health? Well, I've launched our own medical endocrinology organization called Vital Med. Vital Med has the fundamental belief that we need to listen to you first and provide you with an arsenal of options to make sure that we get the best outcomes for you, but we have your interest in mind. No more just going to the doctor being shoved pills or the wrong kind of hormones or being put on the wrong protocols and then not getting the result that you want. Vital Med has a team of doctors, nurse practitioners, and nurses 
who really listen and have the up-to-date knowledge to give you the best options for your care with great results. Check us out, vitalmed.com. If I were to over microderm my face, like on a daily or twice a day kind of thing, my skin would then get red, the tissue would begin to break down, and I would start having the opposite effect of what I was going for. So is it bad? No. But the way I use it and how adapted my body gets to it will determine whether that's a good stress for me or not, right? So if the stimulus of stress creates inflammation, that inflammation creates tissue regeneration. But if I keep doing something, it goes through regeneration to tissue breakdown. So you go from pro-adaption, the initial stimulus, to maladaption. Now my body's reacting to it in such a way it's having a negative impact on my body. And this confuses people all the time because they go, well, heat, good. Pilates, good. Low calories, good. Activity, good. Outcome, bad. No outcome. How is that? Doing the math, it's not mathing. The math isn't mathing. That's because we don't understand the principle of hormesis. A stress stimulus is a good stimulus. If we keep it too long or we go too intense, um, it becomes bad, okay? And so in Katerina's case, you're looking at someone doing too much of a good thing. Now her body is adapted to it for survival. It's kicked in her ANS, her autonomic nervous system, her survival nervous system, which sends messages. It's the brain of your body. It sends messaging all the way through your body, and it tells us we are under fight or flight. We are under the potential for death. Slow down all functions. Be efficient with food. So what happens is, too much inflammation, radical oxygen species builds up from doing too much. And so your mitochondria start to become more fuel efficient. So both can be true. The law of thermodynamics can be observed, but your body's ability to turn up and down, its ability to burn calories, also true. And in Katerina's case, that was exactly what was happening. So what we find out is that, for example, heat, did you know that heat upregulates your autonomic nervous system? So while you might sweat at the time and think that you're losing weight, you're actually going to swell more after from the, from the effect and make yourself more puffy and swollen. When you keep being active, it stresses your body out too much, slows down energy uh, production in the cell, in the mitochondria. And then guess what? You can gain weight from doing too much activity with lower calorie because then your body is adapted to it. That leads to a pro-inflammatory buildup. She was doing pro-inflammatory things too much. There's three main pathways to inflammation, okay? Chemical, emotional, or physical. So functional imbalances in the body would be a physical stressor, right? Working out, physical stressor. Getting into a fight at home, emotional stressor, right? Um, or maybe smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, or exposing yourself to the wrong kind of foods for too long. It can be a chemical exposure. Your body can only manage so much stress at once. The stimulus of change. Remember, inflammation, right? It gets too much stimulus from too, too many of the variables and it begins to break down. This leads to slowing metabolic rates. So what do we do with Katerina? Well, I want to prove a point. We got radical with her. We asked her to stop getting into heat. We asked her to stop doing the Pilates classes. We increased her calories by about 50%. Right? We actually went to simple sugar so her body could absorb it very easily. Her body's metabolism was slow, so it needed simple energy. That's right. We were using juices, fruits, lower protein diet, more Mediterranean. You're going to think that that's crazy, right? Because it's against everything that you would think. But that's exactly what the body needs. The exact opposite of what you were doing to it because it's not adapted to that environment. So Katerina also took a break from work. First, she reduced her, her activity. Uh, then took a break from work, went on a trip, and also walked a lot, right? Because we needed to calm the central nervous system, allowing the mitochondria to burn more. So we still want some activity. We just wanted to be low stress activity, activity that doesn't overstimulate the autonomic nervous system with maybe one or two light trainings just to move the body. Katerina did this. And in just eight weeks time, Katerina looked like a different person. Check this out here. Look at all these different photos, front, Look from the side, look from the back. Now compare the two photos together. Look at these two different photos, right? One was doing way more, eating light, way less. The other was doing way less, eating way more. And the facts are undeniable. You look at the results here and you can see it. Yes, it's true. You can get more for less if you've been doing too much. 
And that's what a big portion of the population in the world for females have been doing and not getting the result that they want. So take this example for Katerina, stress-induced weight loss resistance or stress-induced pro-inflammatory states where your body has become maladaptive. Now, Katerina, brain fog, gone. Fatigue, gone. Vitality, back. Lots of swelling down. Lots of fat burn because the metabolism is starting to work again. She looks incredible. The journey isn't over. Take Katerina as a perfect example. There is too much of a good thing, and stress can not only stop you from losing weight, it can make you gain weight. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. And if you enjoyed this content, you can check out more like this or this. Thanks.